every time the Doctor died in Doctor Who, or at least in New Who, we get to Classic eventually. How this works is regenerations count, fake out deaths count, and deaths that actually happened and then get erased later on, they also count. Also, this is just TV appearances. Don't get me started on comics or expanded media, please. The first time the Ninth Doctor died in his era was in the episode Father's Day. His death was due to the Reapers because Rose messed with time to save her dad, which meant Reapers had to come and clear up the time stream and ended up killing the Doctor. I'm the oldest thing in here. Now this of course was undone later when Rose Tyler's dad, Pete Tyler, sacrificed himself to restore the time. The Ninth Doctor's last death and ultimately regeneration would come in his last episode of the show, when Christopher Eccleston's Ninth Doctor sucked the time vortex out of Rose to save her own life. The next death for the Doctor would be with the Tenth Doctor's incarnation, David Tennant, when he died in the Parallel Universe episode, Turn Left where he goes too far when he's trying to defeat the Ragnars and ends up ending his own life. And this whole episode revolves around what if the Doctor had died at this point? What would happen to his friends, the people he saved? What would happen to the story at that point forth? And it's a really dark episode, and this is a great introduction to that. So it makes it even more impactful and scary to a viewer when in the very next episode, The Stolen Earth, the Doctor gets exterminated by a Dalek. Yeah, and it's great. Now, the only reason the Doctor doesn't change faces during this regeneration is that he puts the remainder of his energy into his cut-off hand, which causes the Metacrisis Doctor to be born, meaning the Doctor keeps the same face, but uses the regeneration. The next on-screen death for the Doctor would be when the 10th Doctor sacrificed himself to save Wilfred Mott and absorbed a bunch of radiation meaning it caused his regeneration into the 11th Doctor. Now, this is arguably one of the most sad and depressing regenerations, purely because this Doctor didn't want to go. It was quite depressing, and he was more human than any of the other Doctors that had come before him, so it was just quite sad. Now, the 11th Doctor really doesn't have a great track record with quote-unquote dying. He gets exterminated by a Dalek, but manages to survive, and manages to fly the Pandorica to fix time, which erases him from existence. So I'm going to count this as a death, but then of course he resurrects, so it's like, you know. Now right at the beginning of series 6, the Doctor is killed by a version of River Song. Now throughout this series, it's a massive plot point that the Doctor's death and when it will happen and people teasing it. But what actually ends up happening is the Doctor's smart and replaces himself with the Tesselector, which means he didn't die because it was a fixed point in time, but the Tesselector did, tricking it. A complex premise, but really all you need to know is he died, but then he sort of didn't. Series 6 plays on the Doctor's death quite a bit, it's like one of the main plot threads. And in this, later on in the series, again, Riversong kills the Doctor using poison lipstick, and the Doctor dies, and the only reason he survives is because River Song uses up all her remaining regenerations to bring the Doctor back to life. The next and final death for the 11th Doctor, played by Matt Smith, would be on Trenzalore. In his final episode, the Doctor is granted a whole set of new regenerations by the Time Lords and regenerates into Peter Capaldi's Doctor. Oh, it just disappears, doesn't it? Everything you are, gone in a moment, like breath on a mirror. Any moment now, he's a cunt. Yet again, a very emotional moment. Of course, this isn't the last time we see the 11th Doctor. He then makes a phone call to Clara from the past, telling her to reassure his brand new incarnation. Something that's equally sad, but very joyful at the same time. Believe me, he is more scared than anything. Right this is, of course, without mentioning the great intelligence killing the Doctor over and over again, but that gets really quickly fixed, and I don't feel comfortable mentioning that, really. Now, the 12th Doctor gets really lucky with not dying all throughout Series 8 and the majority of Series 9 until Heaven Sent, where he dies hundreds of hundreds of thousands of millions of billions of times. He dies a lot here. It's basically the whole premise of the episode is him constantly dying over and over again to escape his confession dying. And a lot of people arguably say this is one of the best or not the best episode of Doctor Who. It's a very emotional one, it introduces some great pieces of music properly, and it's a great episode. And it plays again with the Doctor's death, but not in the sense of what would happen if the Doctor died. It's the Doctor sacrificing himself over and over again to escape his confession dial. 
and it's horrific. The next time is when he gets sort of quote unquote killed by Bill, but it really does doesn't count. So let's move briefly past that. The next time this incarnation passed was when he was regenerating into the thirteenth Doctor. Now by this point he had been damaged by the Master, the Cybermen, by him not wanting to regenerate and holding her off. He'd been completely damaged by this point. He was completely battle wounded, and he gives a great speech here, and it's a great regeneration. Hate is always foolish. Love is always wise. Now, Jodie Whittaker's doctor was pretty lucky with the amount of time she died. She died over and over again when she got killed by Daleks in a time loop. These people should be just gone. I'm using my Sonic to jump into weapon systems. Sonic device will not override my weapons. Yes, it does. Because I've used it before. Correct. However, of course, this is a time loop, so the Doctor by the end is completely fine. But down the road a couple of episodes later, the Master makes the Doctor forcefully regenerate into the Master. I'm going to count this as a technical death. Now, the last time for the 13th Doctor was in the very same episode, The Power of the Doctor, where she regenerated into David Tennant as the 14th Doctor. Again, another great regeneration. The regenerations in New Who are mostly great. Then, a few episodes later, the 14th Doctor, played by David Tennant, bi-generated into the 15th Doctor, meaning that the 14th Doctor and the 15th Doctor were both there at the exact same time. I'm going to technically count this as a death, because it means that this Doctor, the 14th Doctor, at some point would have had to die for this to even take place. So that's why I'm counting it, right? It, it does count. Now, I do want to mention some special cases here that were shown on screen in New Who. We technically saw a bunch of the Timeless Child Doctors die over and over again while Tech Tycoon was experimenting on them to understand regeneration. We also saw the 8th Doctor regenerate in Night of the Doctor, a short, a prelude to the 50th anniversary, where we saw him drink a potion to regenerate into the War Doctor due to him crashing. Fast or strong, wise or angry, what do you need now? In the next big episode, the 50th anniversary, we saw the War Doctor slowly regenerate into the Ninth Doctor. Now the causes of this, I'm going to assume was old age, that he'd served his purpose as the War Doctor and was ready to move on. And technically, we've also seen the first Doctor regenerate in New Who that was recreated for twice upon a time. So, yeah, I'm counting that as well. Of course, this isn't the original regeneration, but it counts. It was reshot for New Who, with a brand new actor to play the first Doctor. Now, of course, there are probably some that I might be missing, but I'm pretty certain that I got the majority of them in this video. Now, of course, please feel free to comment down what was your favourite death for the Doctor in New Who so far, and I hope you enjoyed today's video.